need um, a block. And I got up and started, tried to do a couple of these things this morning. And my sense of balance was really wonky this morning. So okay. I, hopefully it's improved by now. I went to lunch. I had a little wine at lunch. Hopefully that's <laughs> there, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Um, <laughs> so hopefully my balance is improved. But I'm definitely going to have a chair nearby today. Okay. So um, blocks, chair, any, you know, anything else that you feel like you might like to use, nothing particular. And we're going to do essentially the same flow things as we did last week, um, which will be good for you, Cindy, since you missed them. Uh, but uh, were you here last week, Kathy? Uh-huh. I, I was. Huh. She's good. Um, but anyhow, we're going to do the same things, but we're going to do more with our eyes closed if we can manage that without falling over. So um, let's start with, there's a, a Qigong um, pose that we have done previously. I don't know whether in this class or not, but I'm not very graceful today, but it's a very, it's about, it's a balancing and centering pose. So we're going to do that for our sort of collecting ourselves pose. And what it is, is just a movement of the arms. You're going to come into whatever standing position um, just feels really good and balanced. And then with Qigong, the kind of um, underlying essence of it is that you use the least possible effort in everything you do. So if you hold your arms out, you don't tighten them, you don't use strength, you use the least possible effort to keep them aloft. So we're gonna try and do that. And we're going to count three deep, slow breaths in each position. And we're going to do it with our eyes open, but very softly focused in the distance. And our arms are just going to be sort of embracing uh, position around our belly, our heart, and then our brain. So we're um, kind of bringing energy to all the three centers that we operate from, our gut, our heart, our brain. We're going to start around our gut, our belly, and soften our eyes, soften our legs, Soften our shoulders, our jaw, our arms, and then start with three deep, slow breaths, and then move up. And when you're finished with your nine breaths, just drop your arms. And then we're going to spend about a minute just getting loose. 
So moving, waving your arms, maybe twisting a little, letting your head drop, just moving around, letting flexibility come into your body, softness, getting rid of any tension, maybe rolling a little at your hips, rolling a little at your shoulders, anything that feels good, feels loose, allows you to just get your body soft, get your body organized, feel all your limbs, feel like energy's flowing through your body, and then gradually slow that down. And we're gonna come back into a mountain very slowly and gradually. And when you get into that mountain, check your alignment, check your softness. And then we're gonna roll through our feet. So into our toes, rolling through our knees, through our hips, rolling one direction. Right now I have my eyes open, but I'm going to close my eyes and keep that roll. And it's interesting how much more challenging that makes it. Rolling one direction and then switching direction trying to keep your eyes closed, but if that makes you feel too unbalanced, maybe slow down the roll a little. That makes it easier for me to do that roll in the opposite direction. And then still keeping your eyes closed, come back to your mountain. Eyes are closed, but check your alignment without having to look at all. Back in mountain, bring your chin to your chest. And then bring it up through center, up to the sky. And back through center, right ear over right shoulder, left ear over left shoulder, just stretching out the sides of the neck and your throat and the back of the neck back to center. And now we're gonna roll our head. So we'll start by dropping our chin to our chest and rolling our ear over our right shoulder, our chin up in the air, left ear over left shoulder and do two more times that direction. I've still got my eyes closed. If there's any place that's particularly crunchy or you feel a slight twang or pain, stop there and work through it. And then when you're finished going one direction, go the other direction. And we're gonna do several more poses that are starting in mountain and try and keep your eyes closed for as much of them, even the pauses between poses. But if that's making you uncomfortable in any way at all, let them come open, get yourself oriented or stabilized again, and then see if you can close them again. When you've gone three times both directions with your neck rolls, come back to mountain, Eyes closed if possible. Get yourself oriented. And then we're gonna come up to balancing on our toes in this, from this mountain pose with our eyes closed. I find I'm kind of falling forward. So I'm gonna open my eyes to get up on my toes using that soft gaze. And then I'm gonna try and close my eyes again and stay there. And I'm losing my balance when I close my eyes. So I'm having to step ahead a little bit to catch my balance. 
but that's all good. Whatever you're doing to keep that balance is good. Whether you're opening your eyes or moving your feet, just keep trying to come back to the up on your toes balance. And now we're gonna drop our heels. We're gonna do that two more times, starting from a nice well-aligned mountain. So I'm gonna open my eyes now and look back at my feet, down at my feet and make sure they're aligned and kind of waggle my shoulders a little bit. And then again, I'm going to drop my eyelids to half mast to come up. And then I'm going to try and drop them to full mast. And we're going to stay here for a little bit. Your eyes can be open or closed or softly gazing in the distance. However, it works to keep that balance. Challenge yourself a little bit when you feel really balanced. Make it a little harder for yourself. And then we'll drop our heels. Catch our breath, soften our body, check our alignment. And we're going to do that one more time. Coming up on your toes. I'm finding it's helping me if I kind of bend one knee and come up on that toe a little bit ahead of the other foot instead of trying to do them both at the same time. See what works for you. When you're ready, just let your heels drop again. Open your eyes if they've been closed and shake it out. Whatever you need to, to just loosen up, let go of any tension or any stress or strain anywhere. And then when you're done with that, we're gonna come back to mountain and we're gonna do the bent knees straight bent knees up on toes. We did this last week where, and your arms can be in any position where you're going to bend your knees, come up on your toes. We're going to spend a couple of breaths here. Maybe close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. Then we're going to come straighten our knees coming up to standing and drop our heels. Do this two more times. Bend the knees, up on the toes. Oh. Straighten the knees so you're standing straight up, but you're still on your toes. And then drop your heels. Yeah. This girl got all the way to the top and she fell. Someone's having a conversation that we can all hear. If you're having that conversation, would you mind muting yourselves, please? <laughs> so one more time. Bend the knees, kind of 90 degree angle. Come up on the toes. Pause here for a couple of breaths. Straighten the knees, you're still on your toes. Drop the heels and kind of shake it out before we reverse it. So, come back to mountain. We're gonna do the opposite, what I, which I actually think is a little easier. If you can do this gazing softly or with your eyes closed, bravo. I can do it gazing softly, but I can't with my eyes closed. Just do what you can. So I'm gonna come with my legs straight. I'm gonna come up to my toes. Stay there for a breath or two. And now keeping up on my toes, woo, I'm gonna bend my knees, drop my heels, and stay here for a breath or two, feeling that stretch in the back of my calves. Come up to mountain, come up to my toes.
staying on my toes, bend my knees. This transition point is the hard place for me. And when I get my knees bent, I'm gonna drop my heels, feeling that stretch again in the back of my calves. Back to mountain. One more. Toes. I have a fly landing on my nose, which is very distracting. Bang on your toes, bend your knees. When you get your knees bent completely, drop your heels. Stay here for just a couple of moments, stretching. And back to mountain. Just shake it out. Do whatever you need to, to shake it out. <sighs> okay. Now we're gonna, you know, as we talked about it, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, the essences of what you're balancing, what's enabling you to keep your balance are good firm stance with your foot firmly planted, arm position and abs. And then you use your strength to get in and out of the poses or to recover. So we're gonna do this for abs. We're going to do chair. So, we're actually going to come to mountain, sweep our arms up with that light, slight back bend, look up, sweep down for a forward bend. Don't worry if it's not a deep, deep forward bend, knees bent is fine. Let your hands fall wherever it's comfortable, they don't have to come to the floor. Then we're gonna bend our knees, trying not to bring our knees ahead of our toes and using our abs, we're gonna inhale our abs and bring our arms alongside our ears, tuck our tailbone, we're in chair. Check to make sure your toes haven't come in front, your knees haven't come in front of your toes and breathe. up to mountain, release your abs, release your arms, and relax. Sweep your arms up, look up with that slight curve in your lower back. Sweep forward, when you do this forward sweep, Stick your tailbone out, come down as far as you can with a flat back. And then when you get to your edge, then allow your torso, your shoulders, your hands, your head to just flop. Knees can be bent however much is comfortable. Take care of your lower back. If your eyes are closed, open them. Look down at your knees, look down at your toes, drop your bum, bend your knees, inhale your abs, arms alongside ears, back is straight, bum is tucked a little, abs are tight, and breathe. Your neck should be aligned with your spine. Up to standing. Let go of your abs, your shoulders if they've tightened. Let your arms flop. Take a good breath or two. And we're gonna do it one more time. Sweep up, look up. Sweep down. Let everything be soft. 
And this forward bend. Feel that nice stretch behind your waist, all the way up through your rib cage, your spine, into your shoulders. Open your eyes, look at your toes, bend your knees, engage your abs, raise your torso and your arms, and breathe. Up to standing, let go of your arms and shake it out. Hmm. Now we're gonna do a leg stretch that's also a little bit of a balanced pose. So we're gonna come up to the front of our mat and we're going to sweep our arms up, look up, sweep down, sweep our left leg back and drop our knee. So we're in a low lunge. My right knee is over my right ankle. I'm going to flatten my left foot. So the top of the foot's on the mat and then picking my hands up, I'm going to stretch out. You can keep your hands on the ground if you need to. I'm going to stretch my front leg, maybe put a little ahead and flex my foot. And then I'm going to drop my toes and stretch my back leg. Still trying not to put my hands on the ground, but saving myself if I need to save myself. My chest is resting on my thigh. I'm going to bring my torso up and back, straightening my front leg, coming up, bringing my toes up, coming up on my heel, and breathing and using my abs here. Bend my front knee, allowing my back leg to come straight. We'll do this one more time, pressing into the front foot and pushing ourselves back, coming on to the front heel, stretching that leg out. Putting this whole sole of the foot on the ground, pressing our torso into our thigh, bringing our hands to the ground, coming up on the back toes and pushing ourselves back into a downward dog. Arrange your feet, walk it out, do a little walk in the dog, if that would feel good. And then visualize that pyramid with from the hands to the butt, equaling the slope of from the feet to the butt, and the butt's pointed right up in the air as though you were a triangle or a pyramid. Your heels don't have to be on the floor. And come into the very best pyramid you can arrange. And then lift your left foot up and swing or help it up between your hands. Drop your right knee, check to make sure your left knee is not ahead of your left toes, that your knee is pretty much right over your ankle. Flatten the back foot and stretch out that front leg. I'm gonna to have to push my foot forward a little bit to do so. I'm bringing my hands up on my hips again. They can be above your head if you're better at this than I am today or they can be on the ground if you're not up for it today. And then full sole on the left foot on the ground, stretching your right hip out and over. 
and left toes up as you shift back. You knew this is challenging. Take your time. If you're wobbling, it's fine to put a hand down and adjust yourself. This side is more challenging for me than the other side. Actually, there I go. Okay, I'm going to bring my chair over. So I've got a nice supporting chair. Keep up the back and forth. One more time. Chest on left thigh, stretching out the back. And then moving the torso, the buttocks, everything back. I'm going to steady myself with the chair this time while I get into this pose. And then I'm going to try and bring my hands back to my hips, really stretching out that left leg. Then bringing the back, the left foot back to the ground, curling the right toes and coming up into down dog, sweeping that foot back, adjusting any, making any foot adjustments you need to. See if you can come back into that really nice pyramid of a down dog. Tailbone's right up in the air. Legs are really stretched. If you need to bring your feet a little further in so you can get your heels a little closer to the ground, that's fine. Or if you want more of a challenge, take your feet a little further away from your hands. And then look up between your hands and either jump or walk your feet up. Hang over your legs for a minute. Engage your abs and sweep yourself back up into a mountain. A little bit of a back bend and down. Okay, everybody fine? Yeah. We're gonna do one of the flows we did last time, which was the warrior two, which is this warrior. Uh, then, uh, let's see, then a peaceful warrior, side angle, triangle, and then into the half moon. I'm gonna keep my chair available and I am going to get my block. So I got my chair, I got my chair right here. Uh, oops, I have to take it off here. Uh, and I've got my block right here. And I'm gonna come up to the end of the mat and I'm going to sweep my arms up and look up. Sweep down. Flat back, look up. Pull your chest down over your thighs. Bend your knees and sweep your left leg back with the foot pointed about 90 degrees towards the front of the mat, towards your right foot. Then you're going to bring yourself up, twisting your torso to align between your legs, perhaps moving that back leg, perhaps moving it out, perhaps moving it around, bending the front leg. I'm gonna open my arms wide. My right knee is bent. The sole of my left foot is flat on the floor and I'm gonna turn to look over the middle finger of my right hand. And breathe, maybe tuck my tailbone just the tiniest bit and maybe move that left shoulder back, just the tiniest bit. And keep that breath going. Now I'm gonna turn the right palm up, drop the left hand on the left leg and come into the peaceful warrior, sliding that left palm down my leg, feeling the stretch in my right side. My arm is soft here. And seeing if I can do this in one fluid motion, bringing my right elbow to my knee and my left arm in front of my face and down and alongside my ear. 
at an angle I'm here in side angle pose. I'm going to point that top arm straight up to the sky, straighten the right leg, straighten the right arm, and maybe see if I can slide down a little bit more in triangle, maybe grab my block. So I'm resting my hand on my block. A semi-goal here is that you're a straight line from your top fingers to your bottom fingers. Your torso is facing forward. Maybe push your left hip back just a little bit, if need be. Then you're going to bend your bottom knee, bring your top hand to your waist, and I'm going to take my block and I'm going to adjust it in front of my toes and hop my back foot in adjusting that block. I'm going to put all my weight in my standing leg, my right leg, and then I'm going to lift that back leg up, trying to keep my torso turned towards the front. I'm holding on to my chair to help me do that. I'm going to roll my block a little bit higher, and then I'm going to try and bring my left arm up into the air for a really nice half moon here. I'm gonna bend that front knee just a little bit and allow myself to come back, twist my torso so I'm coming into a warrior two, adjusting my feet on the other side, bending that left knee, right leg is straight, right foot is solid on the ground, torso is coming straight up between the middle of my legs, arms are even, parallel to the ground, looking over the middle finger of my left hand. Okay, we're going to do a uh, peaceful warrior. And I neglected to say pick up your block and pick it with and take it with you. So I'm just going to turn around and pick up my block and put it on the other end of my mat before I come into peaceful warrior. Top arm is soft. Shoulders soft. Your legs are doing pretty much all the work here. Side angle. Anytime you need to adjust your foot for a pose, just do it. I'm pushing my right shoulder back a little, my right hip back a little. Breathing. Pointing the top arm up, straightening the front leg, straightening the front arm, finding my block, and I'm going to support myself on that block so I can come into triangle. Arms are one long line. I'm pushing that right shoulder back a little, the right hip back a little, and breathing. Okay, I'm bringing that top arm to my hip. I'm looking down at my foot in my block and hopping my back foot in, planting my block in front of my left toes, coming up on my back toes. And then I'm going to grab the chair for support, bringing all my weight into my front leg, and then bringing my back leg up for half moon. And if I could let go of this chair, I would. 
but I'm pretty certain that I'm going to lose my balance, but I'm going to try and at least lighten my grasp on the chair and breathe. And what I'm focused on here is that my torso is turned towards the front, that I'm not over like this, that I'm up like this. Don't look at me if you're happily in half moon. I'm using my abs here. Now I am going to turn my torso, swing my leg down, let go of all my props, and come up to standing. Close the door and turn the air conditioner on. Take a sip of water now. Do whatever you need to. That's a challenging pose. And next week, we're going to do it without the aid of a chair, but we're going to get into it a different way that is easier. But I just wanted to get you familiar with that torso and leg position before we try and put it all together. Okay, everybody's maybe taking a coolness break, a water break, getting our breath back to normal. Here's my water. Okay, muggy here today. All righty, we're going to do that nice little twist. It's very easy and we all know how to do by now with our ankles crossed. Uh, let's try and all do it with our eyes closed. If that just becomes unpalatable today, open your eyes. So come back into that easy, relaxed, well-structured mountain. Bring your right foot over your left. Bring your arms out parallel to one another, shoulder uh, distance high. And you're trying to keep your hands shoulder distance apart too. And then just let your eyes flicker shut. And we're gonna do that twist to the left, trying to keep our hips facing forward. This twist is coming, uh, is twisting above the waist. You can feel it in your hips, but your hips are facing forward. And breathe. And then coming back slowly, slowly, slowly through center. The more slowly you go, the more solid you are. Just keep going around to the right. Not going to get as far around that way. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Go to the edge of comfort zone. Breathe. Back to center. Try and keep the eyes closed during the transition. So let your arms drop, undo your feet one way, kind of maybe walk it out a little if you need to, then take your left leg over the right so the outsides of your feet are lined up. Arm position, twist slowly right. Breathing deeply the whole way. Abs are engaged. Start to move back towards the left. Through center. Moving towards the left, feeling that twist, just ringing out your spine. Pausing when you get to your edge. Back to center, keeping your eyes closed as long as possible. Dropping your arms, undoing your feet, letting your eyelids flicker open. <sighs> Just moving it out. So get 
to move this out, I like to just circle my hips one direction and the other. It feels good. My hips, my knees rolling a little bit on my feet. That feels great. So we're going to do one more flow. It's the same flow we did last week, the other same flow we did the last week. So it is warrior one, reverse triangle. And last week we did warrior three with our hands on the floor. We're going to do that again, but then we're going to come up after we've you know, kind of got that kind of alignment of our body uh, introduced to our brain. Then we're going to go up and go back into warrior three from standing instead of from uh, whatever triangle, a reverse triangle. So we're going to come to the front of our mat. Get adjusted. Inhale, sweep arms up, look up. Exhale. Swan dive down. Inhale, flat back, look up. Exhale, pull down. Bend your knees, drop your hands, bring your left foot back into a warrior position with the toes pointed slightly forward towards the right foot, towards the end of the mat, front knees bent, back leg is absolutely straight with the heel on the floor and just pushing into your right foot, push yourself up into warrior one. Through all these warriors, I pretty much keep my uh, abs engaged. Just keeps me a little steadier. Then I'm going to straighten my front leg, bring my hands to my hips, hop my back leg in so it's going the same direction as my front foot. And then I'm going to keep my right hand to my right hip, take my left arm, and with a flat back, push towards the opposite wall. Push, 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 push till I've reached my edge. Then I'm going to drop that hand on the outside of my right foot, alongside my pinky toe. And I'm going to drop my left hip, right, raise my, push my right hip up and back a little, raise my right arm, and look at my right arm for that twist. Both legs are straight here. And I'm going to undo the twist, drop both hands on either side of my front foot, bend my front knee, bringing my hands forward a little bit, coming up on my back toes, then I'm going to straighten my front leg and bring my back leg up parallel to the floor. This is supported warrior three. And so ideally, using the floor as your support, your back leg and your front leg should be at a 90 degree angle at the groin. And they should, both your hips should be facing down to the floor. Then when you're ready, bend your front knee just a little bit. Swing that left foot up to meet the right foot. Bend your knees. Engage your abs and come up. Standing and back to prayer. Drop your arms. And we're going to do that warrior three from a standing position. And if you're all like me, you're not going to get anywhere near that 90 degree angle at my groin. It's going to be more like, look like, you know, sort of a lean, but I'm going to try and keep my body straight so I'm not breaking at my waist. And it's going to be more like this. So this is my standing leg here, and my body is maybe like that. So we're going to do that again. 
I gotta watch the chandelier here. So I'm gonna come to mountain. I'm going to take my left foot back. I'm gonna bring my hands into prayer and I'm gonna put all the weight in my right leg as I come up on my left toes. And then to try to not break at the waist, I'm gonna tilt forward at the torso and bring that leg up. And I find that if I do it, hands on the ground the first time, I can actually get more into the position when I do it the second time from standing. Come back up, drop the foot, shake it out. And we're gonna do it with the other leg. So come to the, you're still at the front of the mat. Come back to mountain. Get it all organized, loosened out, any kinks gone. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, sweep down. Inhale, flat back, look up. Exhale, pull down. Bend your knees, hands to the floor. Sweep that right leg back into a warrior one position. Keeping the knee bent, the front knee bent, push into that front foot and bring yourself up into warrior one and engage your abs. Slight arch from your back. Looking up between your hands, if that works for your balance. Straighten that front leg, bring your hands to your hips. Aim the back foot the same direction as the front foot. Keep the left hand on the left hip, take that right arm, back a little, take that right arm with a flat back, push your butt out, push the hand across the room, flat back, flat back until you reach your edge, at which time you drop that hand on the outside of the left foot and breathe and take the left arm up. And if you can do the little twist to look at the hand, that challenges your balance even more. Pushing the left hip back, and the right hip down, the left shoulder back. Now, Undo that twist, dropping both hands to the floor, bending the right knee. Hands are on the floor ahead of you. Your, right, your left knee is bent, the front knee is bent. You're up on the toes of the right foot and you're gonna straighten the front knee and bring the right foot up. Hips are pointed towards the ground. Both legs are straight. And you're making a straight line from the top of your head to the tip of the right toe. Breathing, engaging your abs. Bend the front knee a little, swing the back foot up to meet it. Engage your abs again, sweep up, look up, and come back to prayer. Then just step that right foot back a little bit. Come up on the back toes. And in one fluid motion, you're gonna move your torso, you're gonna to tilt your torso forward and bring your back leg up. 
without trying not to bend at the waist or push your butt out. If you need to grab a chair, I'm much less steady on this side. So I'm gonna place myself next to my chair. And I'm gonna just try to do that tilt. If you wanna bring your hands out alongside your ears or Superman pose flying to your hips, however you wanna do your hands. Abs are engaged and you're breathing. Move back out of that pose, bringing your two feet together and shake it out. Okay, it's easier from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna do standing pigeon, one more balance pose. The only actual just balance pose we're moving in front of two from here because we've done all balance poses so far today. So you're going to come into mountain again and you're going to pick up your left leg and bring the ankle across the knee and then bend the right knee, bring your hands into prayer, and come down in prayer with your left elbow on your left knee, your back is straight, your right leg is bent and breathe. It's a good stretch too, as well as a balance. Feel free to hold on to something if you need to. Straighten that leg, straighten up. Drop the other leg, drop your hands and shake it out. I'm gonna do the other side. So back to mountain, let the weight go into your left leg, bend the knee very slightly, bring the right ankle over the left knee, bend the knee more as you bring your hands into prayer Rest the right elbow on the right knee. Breathe. Gradually straighten that left leg and bring your torso up. Undo your legs, let go of your hands and shake it out. And we're gonna come down to the floor now. So come down to the floor any way you like. I like to come through squatting, but if you don't love that, don't worry about it. So to come through squatting, I'm gonna have my feet about hip distance apart. My arms extended, maybe a little more than hip distance apart. My feet are flat, and I'm gonna come down, down, down. Try to keep my back straight for as long as possible. And then I'm gonna lean forward, and whoops, I'm down. However you get here, it is perfectly fine. So, we're gonna do a little Sphinx and a little child's pose. Um, keep your block handy because we're going to do some legs up the imaginary wall too. So let's come over onto our torso, onto our front and get ourselves just all stretched out nicely on the mat and relaxed. Come into, what's it called, crocodile down here. So you're either have your forehead just resting on your hands your legs are all floppy, your glutes are relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed, or you can rest on one side of the face or the other, bringing your shoulders by your torso. I actually find that a little more relaxing. And see if you can kind of bring your imagination all the way down your spine and get every single vertebra in your spine relaxed. We've done a lot of twisting, a lot of 
final support in these poses. See if you can go vertebra by vertebra, letting go of any tension in your spine, either start at your shoulders and go down to your tailbone or go up from your tailbone. Just take a moment to let go of your spine. And let your breath come back to kind of a neutral, soft breath. And then when you're ready, if you're on the side of your face, bring your head facing forward so that your, maybe your chin is on the mat. Bring your hands under your shoulders or alongside your head and just walk up on your forearms for either sphinx or if you'd like more of a stretch in your lower back, you can bring your hands out straight in front of you for cobra. I find that a little squinchy, so I'm gonna go back to sphinx. Your hands can be straight out from your elbows. They can be together in prayer. I like to support my chin on my hands. A way that I, or a technique I use to not clench my buttocks is I bring my toes together and I let my heels flop out. It's harder to clench my buttocks when my feet are in that position. And breathe. And on every exhalation, see if you can smooth your spine out a little more. All those places where you let go of the tension, go through them again, making them smooth and relaxed. Notice where you feel it the most. If there's a particular place where it's most intense, see if you can bring all your attention there into that place. Lower your torso again. Be coming down onto your forehead. And then we're going to come back into a child's pose, whatever kind of child's pose you want. So I'm going to start by curling my toes and putting my hands underneath my shoulders and then pushing myself up a little bit and just bringing my butt towards my heels, flattening my feet, either spreading my knees or bringing them together, whichever child's pose I'm going to do. And then I like to bring my butt towards my heels before I lower my chest or my forehead. So I'm getting as close to my heels with my butt as I can. And then I'm going to bring my torso forward and drop my forehead to the floor or to a prop or whatever is comfortable and breathe. And feeling that really nice reversion of the sphinx where you were hollowed out at the back of your waist, now you're rounded. Nicely curved. Your shoulders and your jaw are both really relaxed.
So I'm going to push myself up so that I'm coming back to my butt on my heels. And then I'm just going to roll over to one hip or the other and bring my legs out in front of me. Scoop myself up so my whole body is on the mat. Bring my block close to me or my book or my pillow or whatever prop I have. And then I'm just going to engage my abs and roll my back down. Roll, 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 roll. You can do this with your knees bent or straight. Chin is tucked. So my back's flat. I'm gonna grab my block, get it right close to where my butt is. I'm gonna bend my knees, bring my heels about hip, my feet about hip distance apart, my heels as close to my butt as I can get them. And I'm gonna come up into the traditional bridge with no prop. And we're gonna do the three part bridge with one minute no prop, one minute prop, one minute legs up against the imaginary wall. So come up however you want. You can roll yourself up or you can bring your back up as though it's a plank. And just try and adjust your shoulder blades so they're a little bit underneath the backs of your shoulders. And breathe. At any time you want, you could go ahead and use and insert the prop. There's no time rules here, but I'll tell you what a minute is up. Grab your prop and you can come up with your toes like I do, or if there's enough space in there to just slide it in without coming up in your toes, slide it in under your sacrum. Adjust it so that you're perfectly comfortable and notice the difference in the arch of your back when you're supported by the block. And we'll hold this for a minute here. If you want to adjust your shoulders a little, you can. Adjustments you want to make are fine. And then if you'd like to do the legs up the imaginary wall, pick up one leg, point the toes up, the other leg, point the toes up, evaluate how that feels on your sacrum. If you need to change anything, change it. I'm going to spend one minute here. Notice how your back feels here. Notice the difference of the curve, the arch. And then when you're ready, drop one leg and the other leg and either pick your butt up and take the block out or just roll off the block. Coming back to your back flat on the ground, step your feet a little further away from you and move them to the outside edges of your mat. And we'll do a minute in relaxation pose with your knees supporting each other. And this is the time when you're really going to let go of any tension or holding in your belly. 
So I actually like to do relaxation pose with my hands on my belly so that I can feel it, let it go. I can feel it in my fingers, my palms and my hands. You can stay here for Shavasana, or you can move back into a legs up against the wall or move into any kind of Shavasana you want with any props you want. If your attention has wandered, bring it back to your body, to your fingers, your toes, feel the energy, maybe a warmth or a tingling, and then move them very gently, maybe bringing that movement into your wrists, ankles, your feet, your arms. And carefully start moving yourself up to sitting, keeping your eyes closed, if you can do that. If you'd like to unmute yourself, if you're muted, feel free. Hmm. We're gonna chant an ohm. So come into whatever comfortable position you'd like. If your eyes have been open, flicker them shut again. Bring your hands to prayer in front of your heart. Oh.
Namaste.